Hey everybody, it's Miss Plummer. I am back to read the next section of Kitten Chronicles. Um, if you remember, Jasper has learned the new normal, which is life at home during the school year when you live with a teacher. And now in chapter 11, we have the V word. I learned an awful word shortly after school started. The word was veterinarian. It's this awful place where humans take their animals. Jasper, come here, sweetie. I have a treat for you, Jody said. Treats, I love treats, I meowed back. As she gave me a treat, she picked me up and then she placed me back in my plastic jail. Don't take me back, I meowed. Oh, it's okay, sweetheart. We're just going for a ride, Jody said. Don't take me back. I love my castle. I meowed again. To protect the couch, we just need to take your claws out of your front paws, she explained. You need to what? It's okay. You'll be okay, she replied. Quit saying it'll be okay. No one takes your fingernails off. She stopped the car. Thankfully, it wasn't the place where she got me. Then as I entered the building, you would not believe what I heard. I heard dogs. Not just a dog, but lots of dogs. I also heard cats. It was awful. And that's Jasper in his jail cell. Take me home, Jody. I'll be good. I won't nip or claw the couch. I get it. I get it. Please. Jasper can come back now. A strange voice announced. Jody carried my plastic jail case back closer to all the other animals, and then Dr. Ryan took me out of the case. Why do you want him to claw it? He asked. You tell her, Doc, I meowed in agreement. He's staring up all my furniture and my legs. He's an inside cat, but I don't want to remove his back claws just in case he runs away. Run away? Great idea! I'm going to run away if you do this to me, I warned. Well, I won't remove them totally, but I'll cut them low enough that you shouldn't damage your furniture. We try not to declaw cats when possible, explained Dr. Ryan. Phew! That was a close call. This place wasn't so bad if you could get past all the other animals screaming in here. Ouch! What in the world was that? I gave him his first shots, too, Dr. Ryan said. What? She never said anything about shots. I decided right then and there that I would not volunteer to eat treats when the plastic jail case was open. No way would I ever come back here again. Chapter 12, Inside Tree Adventures. It started to get a lot colder by the windows. The sun decided not to shine as long each day. Jody rarely was home when the sun was out, but then the coolest thing happened. Th hmm? What was that? I knew it was time to go explore. I found Jody with a great big box in the middle of the living room. Do you know what was inside? Do you? It was a tree! I jumped right inside the box. She grabbed me and she tossed me to the floor. How rude. I didn't care. I was so excited. Jody took out a big piece of the tree and connected it to another piece of the tree and soon she had a really tall tree in the corner of my living room. I didn't care that it was taking the place of my bench in front of the window. I had a tree of my very own! I could hardly wait. I started to climb it. No, Jasper, this is a Christmas tree. It's not a toy. Jody said in a not so nice voice. Of course it's not a toy, duh, it's a tree for me. I meowed excitedly. Well, do you know what she did next? It was like a punch in my little kitten gut. She picked me up and tossed me onto her bed and shut the door. How dare she? This is my kingdom and that tree was mine. I was so mad. I meowed and meowed. She ignored me. I swatted my paw under the door, begging her to release me. Nope, she still ignored me. Then she started singing. Ugh. My usual habit when she chose to sing was to bite her ankles, so I'm trapped in this little space. Okay, maybe I did have every room but the living room. The living room was where I wanted to be. It felt like I was being tortured in a dungeon where I couldn't climb my inside tree or nip her ankles. Life wasn't fair, so I did what any self-respecting cat would do. I took a nap. I wasn't happy about it, knowing my tree needed me. Soon my nap was interrupted by the squeak of the door. 
Man, she really needed to fix that. She should add a little... The tree! The tree! I need to climb the tree! I meowed excitedly. Jasper, the ornaments on the bottom branches are just for you, Jody answered. Ooh, I'm going to climb that tree! I meowed with a great anticipation. I stretched and then I zoomed all the way up to the sparkly plastic thing on top. It was glorious. I could watch the window. Jody started laughing. You know what she did. She grabbed a camera. And she took... Another picture. Isn't he adorable? Then she did the unthinkable. She grabbed me and she pulled me out of the tree branches. I crept back over to my tree. Jody grabbed the water police. I tried to be sneaky. Accidentally bumped into the lower branch and it jingled at me. I kid you not, this tree could make noise. I swatted at the ornament and it fell off the branch and I swatted and scampered all over the living room playing with this jingly ball. It was the greatest. I think it was a bit too much excitement. I had no choice but to take another nap to refill my energy tank. Are you a sleepy kitty? Jody asked. Of course, I meowed in reply. Come here, baby. You can take a nap on my lap, she offered. I thought about it. I mean, with the white blanket on the ground outside, I knew her lap would be nice and warm. But I had a tree inside my house. I rubbed her ankles so she wouldn't feel ignored. And then I sauntered, that means walk slowly, over to my tree, and I curled up on the blanket wrapped around his trunk. It was like living outside, inside the comfort of my own castle. Chapter 13. Back to the V word. You would not believe what happened shortly after Jody put the tree back inside the box. She decided to feed me some wet, mushy food that smelled delicious. The scent was mouth-watering. I was so excited, but then she put it inside my plastic jail. Hmm, why did you put it in my jail? I asked. Go on in, Jasper. It's really tasty, she explained. Well, it must be something special to not put it in my usual food bowl. I meowed as I scurried into my jail. Then she shut that door and she locked me inside. Next thing I knew, she opened the house door and she carried me back to the car. And I immediately stopped eating the scrumptious food and I realized it was another trick. Don't give me away. Take me back inside, I demanded. It's okay, baby. We're just going to the vet for a quick visit, she replied. Vet? No! I decided I was never going back to that place again, remember? I reminded. She stuck her fingers through the metal gate and she tried to pet me. I attempted to not go to her, but I must admit, between you and me, I was scared. I allowed her fingers to make me feel a little better. Then she stopped the car and I realized we were back at Dr. Rhymes. She took me in and sat in the corner. Jody was nice enough to turn my jail so I didn't have dogs looking at me. It seemed like time passed like a snail crossing a road. Finally, I heard a familiar voice. Jasper, you can bring him back, Jody, she announced. As Jody carried my jail back to the room, I allowed, excuse me, I swallowed and tried to make the whole thing disappear. The next moment, an arm reached back into the cage and pulled me out. But this time, however, it was a lady's hand instead of the man hand. I learned that Dr. Rhines had another vet helping him with some patients, and this one was a nice lady. Her name was Dr. Simon. So he's getting neutered, Dr. Simon question. He's also getting his next round of shots. Yes, that's the plan, Jody answered. The plan? What plan? No one cleared this plan with me. I am ready to go home now, I meowed. You can pick him up in the morning, Dr. Simon added. Morning? Morning? Oh, no, you don't. Jody, you will not leave me here. I demand you to take me home, I meowed loudly. The next thing I know, Jody walked away. It was the longest night of my entire life. I'm not talking just since I moved in with Jody. There had never been a longer night in my life than the night I spent at the vet. The other dogs and cats were not aware that they were in the presence of royalty. Dogs barked, cats hissed. It was absolutely, positively, completely awful. It was so bad that I could barely sleep. How rude. After an eternity, the other humans came to try and pet me. I tried to ignore them, but it had been forever since anyone had petted me or scratched my chin. They gave me some food, then the barking and hissing of the other animals started. It was awful. I was never, ever so confused. 
when Jody returned to take me home. On one hand, I was so happy she hadn't forgotten me, but on the other, I was completely miffed that she left me. How dare she? However, I knew I didn't want to remain at the vet's office for one more minute. I curled up in my jail cage and thankfully returned home with Jody. I was so tired from the ordeal that I think I slept a whole week. I could tell Jody felt really badly about it. She carefully carried me around the house and she gave me treats throughout the day. I guess that was the silver lining. Don't be too happy for me though. That silver lining was followed by an awful storm. She took me back to the vet a couple weeks later for a checkup. Who does that? That's just mean. I thought my human was nice, but this whole visiting the vet, it is just mean. The fourth session will be the conclusion of King Chronicles. Tune in.